it feels like the second time today. Uh, we, we are going to have a very interesting panel on uh, dual use uh, space applications and uh, we'll discuss uh, uh, some issues uh, regarding to, uh, to this field of uh, activity in space and I would like to invite a very distinguished uh, panelists and encourage you to uh, read about their bio uh, on the website of this conference. Uh, I'll start with uh, Jasmine Inbar. She is a vice president of uh, Earth Observation and Corporate Development uh, at Astera. Yeah. And Professor Ran Genosar, he is a professor of electrical and computer engineering at the Technion, co-founder and president of Ramon Space. Uh, Brigadier General Uri Aron, director of uh, Israel Space Agency. And Itamar Shahar, who is a chief project officer at uh, ISI ImageSat International. So uh, first, uh, thank you for uh, being here. And uh, our issue is a very interesting uh, one. And I'll uh, just uh, start uh, with uh, you, Jasmine. What do you think, in your eyes or views, what is uh, dual use in space? So first of all, nice to meet you all. I represent uh, Astera today. Uh, two sentences about Astera. Astera is the leading Earth observation company. Um, specializing uh, in SAR, L-band insights uh, to detect subterranean uh, soil moisture. We work in more than 65 countries worldwide and are providing actionable intelligence to water utilities, government agencies, and uh, infrastructure companies. Dual use, in my opinion, is to use Earth observation, data, insights, analytics, uh, both in the civilian or commercial uh, market, as well as in the defense uh, industry. Okay, uh, Ron, uh, could you please tell us uh, in uh, two sentences, uh, besides what your uh, take on uh, dual use, uh, what is Ramon Space? Thank you. Ramon Space makes uh, space-borne computers for operation in payloads and satellites, and um, going to uh, dual use. Uh, dual use is just a list of criteria on how to classify items. It's uh, one list out of uh, three uh, groups of classifications. Uh, one, classi one group is the munition list or the uh, weapons or military items. Um, the last group is unclassified items, commercial. And the middle group is dual use right in between. And um, if um, a device or system or a satellite uh, is above a certain threshold that's determined internationally by arrangements, uh, such as the Wassenaar arrangement, um, then it becomes uh, dual use and it is subject to export control. So dual use is just a method of uh, government to control international trading in uh, goods that relate to uh, military in general, uh, but in space in particular. Okay, Jasmine, uh, one more question to you. With your background at a defense contractor, Rafael, and now working in a somewhat uh, a startup uh, attitude uh, company, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the differences between working in two worlds? So yeah, it was uh, quite a change for me after 10 years at uh, the great Rafael Advanced Defense Systems, and um, it's been very, very exciting uh, at Astera for the last uh, two years. Um, first of all, we don't have a regulator, which is uh, very easy uh, for us to uh, handle processes. If I, if I take a process, for example, from ideation until the development of a new algorithm, then I see that it, is, it can be done in a very fast uh, pace. Um, as far as uh, some business aspects, then I see two major uh, differences. One is uh, with customer facing. In the defense industry, 
um, they are you know, the best analysts that they will know what to do with the data or insights that we provide them with. Many uh, times we're not gonna know even uh, how, what they're gonna fuse it with, what exactly is the pain in the end of the, of the, the road. Um, whereas uh, here in the, in the commercial industry, Testera, we take our customers hand in hand and make sure that everything is very intuitive. We provide them with an app to fully understand and most importantly solve their, their uh, problem because our customers today, many times they couldn't care less uh, whether, uh, uh, I mean, from what sensor the data was taken, it was through visit time, what resolution, they have a pain, they have a need that they need to solve and we are there to assist them all the way from, from zero to until it's completed. The second difference is with the, um, I would say, projects versus uh, SaaS. Uh, most defense uh, industries are mainly doing big projects. And a project can be one time, decent project. And uh, in the commercial industry, we work uh, in services, SaaS, uh, s uh, software as a service, satellite as a service. And uh, the repetitiveness of the data and the insight is, uh, is crucial. Okay, uh, one for you, uh, Itamar. Uh, can you please describe in, uh, in, in short what is uh, Imatsat? And then I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, my question. Well, ImageSat is a company that, at the end of the day, delivers uh, uh, intelligence to its clients. Uh, we do it through Earth observation satellites, which we operate, uh, military-grade uh, satellites. Uh, but on top of that part of our portfolio, we uh, also have uh, national space projects. We have one extremely large project uh, constructing from bottom up uh, a, a space uh, sector in Chile. Uh, including uh, ground segments, space segments, etc. Um, and right now, we develop more solutions that are based on the data that we collect, analyze and collect. At the end of the day, we are a company that uh, delivers the best possible intelligence based on Earth observation uh, satellites. Okay, so uh, recently, I, I can tell you that, uh, in my opinion at least, uh, the ISI was uh, reinvented uh, itself, and it's now a provider of satellites, not just uh, intelligence or data or solutions. Um, so, yet, yet uh, most of the business are on the governmental sector. Uh, part of it is uh, in the defense. Where do you see the challenges, let's say, money-wise, uh, the cash flow coming from the civilian sector or is it enough money at the civilian sector that will require your uh, specific uh, uh, solutions? Image that was created to solve issues within the security sector. Uh, it has in reinvented itself uh, um, a few years back, uh, entering the new space industries and looking into more solutions that we can generate income from. And we were looking for, uh, for business cases in the uh, commercial sector. What I still believe that at least 80 to 85% of all the money going into the space sector, Earth observation at least, uh, comes from the defense uh, sector. And, and that leads kind of where uh, most of the space uh, providers or space information, for, uh, space data providers uh, go to. Um, at the end of the day, there is a paradox. Some of the applications that are needed with the commercial sector require the best or the, the cutting edge uh, of the Earth observation satellites. Very high resolution, uh, very high uh, uh, analytics uh, capabilities. And uh, uh, all this while the money that is offered or that is being generated from these applications is relatively low at this stage. We are still looking for the killer app or the alternative, we do believe in a long tail of services that is being based on the data that is accumulated within the companies. Okay, Uri, uh, I think that uh, you are a manif manifestation of a dual use because uh, of your uh, rich background in, in the military, being a brigadier general at the Air Force, 
And you made that transition yourself, uh, leaving one system, which is, of course, a defense military uh, system, to the civilian one. So first, on a, perhaps some personal note, the differences between working with, within the government at a civilian uh, space uh, agency and, um, and the Ministry uh, of Innovation, Science and Technology. And what do you think are the challenges, or uh, I don't want to say obstacles, of a viable, diverse, and uh, civilian-oriented space sector in Israel? Yeah, hi. Thanks, uh, thanks for the question. Um, uh, first of all, I think it's a very important panel. Uh, and it's actually connected between the previous panels, I think all of them, in some way or another was related or could be related to the dual use. Even just going back to the issues that uh, were presented here by Earth Observation and other, uh, so I think I think the panel is a very very important one, and, and, and you've, you've got a longer memory than I. I think that's the first time that we are putting this one the second time on the table of the Ramon conference. Um, I will not go into the personal uh, uh, experience between the different organizations uh, because uh, once I'll start, probably I will never end. Uh, about the personal uh, experience, but what I would like to emphasize that, uh, again, my belief that in space, basically, everything is dual use. And the line between, let's say, military and defense and civilian is a broken line. It's not a strict line. What we need to do, and probably this is the challenge, is to understand the way we cross between those lines. And Professor Gonesal talked about the mechanism. I see it more as an attitude uh, and, and a way of thinking, because once you understand that from a national perspective, space is an asset that should bring value to everyone, defense as well as, as, uh, as, as civilian and commercial, of course, then you must understand that we need to, we don't have enough budget, money, or resources to do them both. What we need to do, and I think it's, it's, it's relevant to everyone, even to the US. What we need to do is to understand what is the right way to cross those lines. That's the big challenge, because that's enter us to other areas uh, uh, that, that are very challenging, but uh, we won't be able to do this, this, this step forward and to, to formalize the right uh, mechanism to cross those lines between civilians, between commercial and defense, we won't be efficient enough. So I think uh, in a way that the, the new space forum that was just announced is, is one of the keys to, to achieve those goals. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. There is the, 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 that's one. We need to have a space law in Israel a space law could bring some regulation issues into the table and formalize the right behavior of the country. Uh, we need to formalize uh, 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 the way we, we act with, with, with partners, international partners. But again, the first step is to understand that in space, everything is dual. Yeah, by nature. Uh, just mean Astera uses uh, space assets uh, of different kinds and, and, and origins to improve life on Earth. You save a lot of water. True. And uh, what could you tell us uh, about uh, taking your technologies and, and know-how and transfer it to the defense uh, sector? Yes, so we are very proud of the impact that we are creating worldwide by saving water. Um, and yes, uh, Stera started with uh, its main product for uh, leak detection. Uh, this is how we apply the element SART that penetrates the ground to identify uh, leakages. But from there, we evolved and entered the soil moisture mapping um, arena. And uh, this uh, opened up many interesting verticals, such as uh, roads, so transportation, railways, you know, to prevent sinkholes, mudslides, landslides, uh, to the insurance market for underwriting purposes, in, um, emergency management, and more. But the same uh, soil moisture map can be also used by the commander for uh, maneuverability purposes. 
um, and this is an interesting uh, shift. Uh, also, L-Band is the only band that penetrates tree canopies, um, and we are able to detect objects beneath tree canopies, and this is very interesting in the defense industry. So you, in your uh, list of uh, dreams, do you want to see an Israeli L-Band uh, satellite, for example? Yes. Or did, um, you, did you brought uh, your checkbook? Uh? <laughs> This is our main uh, challenge, by the way. Uh, we are missing data. Um, if you asked me two years ago, I would say we are swimming in data. The challenge is to extract the relevant insights out of this vast amount of uh, data. Today I'm saying at Astera, the opposite. We know how to extract the relevant information. We know how to solve the problems. We seek data. And today we are using only two L-band satellites uh, operated by uh, the Argentinian and the Japanese space agencies, which are mainly operating for research purposes, and we are not at the top priority. Our customers are seeking more and more frequent visit time. There's super, I mean, there's so many verticals that can be relevant, but we cannot enter because we are missing this data. So if there is a company here that would like to join forces, with the support of Uri, of course, we'll be more than happy. Yeah, well, uh, I'm now switching to a, a one freestyle question to you still, Jasmine. Uh, is it possible for uh, some foreign companies to limit the data that is uh, going to be available to a company like yours uh, since it, uh, it could now serve the, the governmental or uh, military um, uh, sector? So and, yes, and, 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 and is it a problem that uh, you it are can be preparing a for? In certain conflict zones, um, we faced it uh, in the past, uh, but uh, the majority part is okay, and we are able to provide the necessary insights. Once we'll have our own satellite, the sky's the limit. Or just you mentioned the, the long memory. We all, not, not all, some of us still remember 1991, the war, the Gulf War in Iraq, and at the time, the data from a meteorological satellite was limited because they didn't want to to give free of charge uh, data uh, for uh, Saddam Hussein. Uh, Ran, uh, you and I recently uh, spent a little time talking about the huge investments of uh, SDA and the Space Force uh, in space in general and uh, in several aspects of using uh, computer uh, technology to, uh, to provide a huge data storage in space. Uh, how could you, what could you see um, the uh, fusion of your expertise and the needs of, let's say, the largest and biggest spender in space, uh, the U.S. Uh, military space sector. So besides um, the technical capabilities, um, it's all about um, two things, uh, money and um, uh, international competition. And um, uh, SDA uh, activity in the United States has been made possible by um, a revolution in dual-use rules and uh, ITAR protection, uh, which is a protection of munitions, um, that happens in the United States uh, through the 2000s. And um, it um, led to the ability of the U.S. government to uh, seek solutions from commercial companies. And the commercial companies, uh, are as opposed to uh, defense contractors before them um, could deliver goods and make uh, systems, make satellites and so on that lie uh, or that, that fall under the um, dual use umbrella, um, which is good for them and for the rest of the world. And it enables also uh, foreign uh, non-US uh, entities to participate in a game. Of course, Parts of the work that uh, the U.S. government in the uh, U.S. Space Force and SDA are doing is classified and is uh, uh, classified under ITAR. Um, but they created uh, a mechanism where uh, the rest of the industry is isolated from that and you can still be active in that domain without having to 
um, operate under ITAR uh, for every little thing, uh, which is good. Uh, the rest of the world is following, and uh, this also opens doors for us and for others in places like Europe. Um, hopefully, Israel will also follow with a similar um, evolution uh, in the near future. Okay, so uh, by the way, this is the, the correct time to, uh, to say that on the JUICE mission to Jupiter, there are seven computers run by uh, your computer chips. Yes, in addition to the atomic in, clock. In addition to the Acubit uh, clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, we're spreading uh, all over the solar system. Um, okay, Uri, um, how could you help newcomers into the space uh, arena, meaning Israeli new startups, I don't talking uh, necessarily about uh, a company that makes food for astronauts, but the technology uh, driven uh, hardware uh, that uh, is going to be in space, it could be space cameras, it could be computer chips, uh, whatever. Uh, how could the Israeli uh, space agency ease their entrance into the space arena, which is by nature dual, dual use, and to, let's say, to protect them a little bit from the, the organs that uh, regulate this field. So, so I think first of all, what we need to do is to define the real need. Um, and when I said that uh, everything is, or almost everything is dual use, then this specific uh, uh, company uh, from our side in the space agency, we need to define the real need. Where is the real need uh, uh, to cross those lines? Uh, usually, probably, it will go um, all the way to what we call API, or uh, the regulatory issues. Um, this is something that we are struggling with. Uh, hopefully, uh, by regulation, we'll be able to solve some of it. Not all of it. We'll be able to solve some of it. But again, I was talking about perspective and, and a way of thinking. Once we'll be able to discuss it with this specific startup, I believe we'll be able to at least help them to overcome some obstacles that they're probably not aware of. This is one thing. On the other hand, maybe from our perspective, we'll be able to generate uh, new ideas, let's say on the other side of what, what, what they need or what they can do with a specific uh, technology. So, the place that we are sitting could combine those two worlds, but again, I'm going back to the need. What exactly is the need? What exactly is, is, is the product? And where it is involved those two worlds of civilian and, and, and defense, and then try to understand where exactly do you need to cross the line. Sometimes, I can tell you from my experience, sometimes really there is no line need, that need to be crossed. The only thing is you need to start walking. And, and sometimes the barriers are very, very low. They just frighten us, but they are very, very low. The lack of knowledge about the barriers stops some of those entrepreneurs. We could help them with that. So what in, in uh, one or two sentences, what can you say to an com Israeli company that is afraid of uh, going into the defense uh, aspect of space uh, because they are afraid that uh, cooperation and collaboration with space agencies or funds from Europe, for example, uh, will not be possible for them? What I will say to them, let's start. Let's start and, and start digging the right problems. Eventually, I believe those problems are probably going to be smaller than what we expected. Because I can tell you from the perspective of the, of the government, usually most of the organization really do believe that they need to help those those companies. The only thing that we are lack the mechanism to solve those problems. So let's start understanding the questions and maybe there will be one big question that we'll need to answer but most of them are probably just a mechanism that we need to walk through. Okay, Jasmine, where do you like to see Astera in time frame of let's say five years from now or ten years from now? other than uh, having an Israeli-made uh, L-band uh, satellite, this was decided here already. So unless an m &A will uh, meet us uh, before, um, 
for sure to expand our portfolio uh, via uh, a satellite that um, can guarantee the certain capacity that we are um, at need for um, and, um, and, and spread into new markets, new territories, uh, the potential is, is there for sure. Itamar, where, where do you see ISI in a decade from now? ISI should still and, and continue to build its position as a world leader in uh, the supply of, of uh, Earth observation um, uh, data. I think we should have a diversified uh, portfolio of satellites, both EO and other forms of, of, uh, of satellites, including SAR, maybe Elbend. Um, as well as um, uh, ELINT, RF, all kinds, all sorts of uh, intelligence gathering uh, sensors from space and expand our uh, capacity to provide uh, products which are extend beyond the defense, uh, the defense uh, market um, to commercial and civilian uh, needs as well, uh, depending on the, the actual ability to define what are the needs and where can we uh, find new markets uh, for our wares. Okay, Ron, not the same question. Uh, something else. Uh, what do you think about the, uh, the, the trend of, uh, of the U.S. military uh, space forces, uh, etc., uh, of using uh, commercial off-the-shelf components like computer chips uh, and services? And when, where do you see uh, Ramon Space in that regard? So for us, uh, defense and non-defense markets are all the same because uh, space seems to follow what happens in evolutions and revolutions on the ground. And uh, 20 years ago when we started, we said software is everything. Let's build computers for space. And today we say AI is everything, let's build AI machines in space. And that's where we see ourselves heading, uh, big AI machines. Whether it's the defense world that uses them or somebody else, that's unrelated. However, um, the whole th one thing about dual use, um, as opposed to um, military or defense equipment, um, defense customers, as well as many other customers look for a uh, return on investment and um, uh, a set of uh, reliability uh, criteria that can only, that cannot be answered by commercial uh, uh, systems. For example, you mentioned computer chips. Uh, computer chips made by the largest computer manufacturers on earth are designed to be optimized for, for uh, operation on the ground and they lack all the useless, t useless means uh, to protect them in space. So they tend to die in space after a year or two. Uh, and that's been proven time and again. But if the customer, be it defense, for example, wants an operation of five to, for example, OFIC satellites have been operating 15 years in space. Um, 20, okay, now it's 20. Um, and um, uh, so most commercial uh, uh, optimized, very good, high performance computer chips from the ground uh, fail. So uh, you have to build something that's unique for space and compromise on the performance or cost or other things. And um, uh, for us, uh, that's where we see the future of what we do. Uh, we do things um, for space that are resilient and can operate and pro provide high level of artificial intelligence capabilities in space in 20 years, for 20 years, uh, for that length of time, and uh, they will, of course, not be competitive on the ground. So these are two different worlds. Okay, thank you. Just a short notice to the audience. I can see the clock, and uh, because of the time delays, uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, Uri cut uh, 10 minutes. So I won't ask you another question. Uh, I just, uh, I'll just give you uh, the opportunity to, to give, uh, let's say, the answer to a question that uh, I didn't ask. Something that you think the audience should hear. I can tell you that 
from my perspective, even in this uh, forum, I think uh, a dedicated, uh, perhaps not uh, open uh, discussion, but uh, a close one, half a day or full day of uh, a workshop on dual use, I think in 2024 is, is much needed. I think uh, if, if I should give just one quick answer to the question that you didn't ask, uh, uh, I probably will say that uh, from space you see no boundaries. They shouldn't, we shouldn't build our own boundaries. Uh, what we sh must understand, that in order to build a sustainable space ecosystem, we need to partner with everyone that we can because space is still hard. So I guess the question is what we need to do. So we need to put no boundaries. OK, thank you. Uh, so uh, I have uh, a lot of uh, more questions. So that, uh, this is a proof that uh, a further discussion is needed, uh, perhaps uh, later, uh, but not uh, on this panel, because our time is up. So thank you very much to the distinguished uh, panelists. And uh, see you on the next discussion. Thank you. Thank you.